Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A, emails number 130, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them. Forgive my voice today, uh, just, a, just a tad under the weather, and, but I'm going to power through it anyway because i got to get through these things before the interviews in the afternoon. So the first one is called Staged Reality. Mark, now I see the whole ensemble of worldly things as a controlled production within the dome you often mention. For example, and from the standpoint of a genuine science, uh, okay, uh, one, NASA is a monopoly. Two, NASA disallows peer review. Three, NASA results cannot be replicated. Four, NASA science is largely not available to anyone without a binding contract to ex to in join it in the first place is that a word uh it's all science fail anyway great work and keep it up steve in new york city cool man thank you for that this one's called flat earth hi mark i was just thinking the easiest way to prove or disprove the globe model is to fly due south by compass from either south america or cape town to melbourne fly over the south pole and then due north by compass to the corresponding other continent if the journey can be made we are on a ball. If not, then we are not on a ball. <laughs> Guy regards Joe. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice, except uh, that particular type of polar flight isn't allowed. Uh, the Antarctic Treaty doesn't allow it. And you're going to have to find a pilot that's going to bypass the GPS system. And remember, the compass doesn't work uh, down in the Southern Hemisphere. From what I can tell, uh, there was a guy in Antarctica, again, goes along with everybody else I've talked to who put out a video just recently and said that he was standing in an Antarctica and they said, hey, how, how does the compass work down there? And he goes, it really doesn't, which is, of course, super strange because if it's a south pole, it should dominate magnetic south. And it doesn't. This one's called School Project. Hello, Mark Sargent. I am currently a student in high school. Oh, I love these. For my sociology class, we are doing a project on subcultures. I have selected the Flat Earth Society as my focus. I would love to speak with you about your experiences as a Flat Earther. Looking forward to hearing back from you, Allie. And I wrote her back and I said, yeah, you bet. Happy to talk with you. I don't care if it's a junior high school. I, in fact, I've done junior high school newspapers, articles. Uh, this one's called The Flat Earth Dear spelled wrong mark Sargent. i have some questions on the earth seriously spelled deer wrong that's like a first uh questions on the earth being flat i hope that you could answer my many questions okay he, english may not be his first language because he spelled many m-a-n-e and nobody does that uh i want to be part of this group of people who are making their mark on this place we call home people who are get a word out yep definitely not english i am myself a boy man kid whatever i am 17 and the point is that i am homeschooled and have a lot of free time which i would like to use in being taught of this as of now my opinion being that i think the world is spherical flat earth we live on I love theories, and I would also love to have a talk about this one with you, whether that is in an email of over the phone. I ha just have the yearning to know, like Pandora Box or Atlantis, and if it does exist or not, uh, what is in the box of Pandora. Like when someone keeps something that they know away from you just to make feel crazy. I'd love to know which country this guy's from. Uh, uh, I have that feeling with this theory to know, and as I have said, I would love to talk and have some questions answered, so please email me back. I hope this get to the right person and does not look over in the hundred of thousand of emails you probably get just like mine asking for a spot in the light. Oh, that's interesting. Asking for a spot in the light. That's a w cool way of putting it. I would like to talk more sincerely. Emmanuel Morgan. P.S. I also watched your documentary on Netflix not two minutes ago. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking that you would do this. Uh, and had to do this even though I it is 1 a.m. where I am right now. <laughs> okay. I will write him something back. I don't know exactly what yet, though. Oh, look. This is from Dan the Psyman. I, I don't get a lot of emails from him. 
Uh, hi, Mark. It's Dan. Simon Dan. You know, I that I actually can see that in email address, but that's fine. I tried contacting you on Instagram, but not sure how often you check in, which is very interesting because I don't have an Instagram account. And there's somebody that's made an Instagram account in my name. I don't know who, if it's a good person or a bad person. Uh, I'm only on YouTube. I'm not on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever else is out there. Uh, I'm only on YouTube. I just don't have the time. So if you're emailing me through there or contacting me through there, not getting to me. I've got an idea and I'm just going to float it out there. I remember you saying you wanted to debate a physicist at the conference in a video once. So how about I host debate a debate on my channel? It'll be completely impartial. I'll be a completely impartial moderator and you can debate someone all above board, a proper debate, etc. And I think a properly advertised, we could get potentially 10,000 live views. Let me know what you think. Cheers, Dan. Uh, <clears throat> it's a nice idea, Dan, and I'm not going to come down on you. I mean, you, you work very hard to try to come against us and I appreciate an enthusiastic opponent. However, you're never going to find a, a, a scientist. They're never going to come out. The closest I ever got was that guy from uh, Georgetown University and through the German television team. And he backed out as soon as we came up with the questions. Uh, it's just it's just not going to happen. A physicist is very... It's not for the reason you might think. It's because they're so tunnel uh, visioned when it comes to their topic. They know a very specific band of the physics world or um, the astrophysics world. And they, they, when, when broached with anything outside of it, they don't know what to do. Uh, they just deer in the headlights. So, and they know this. And so they, they really don't want to, they don't want to get in the arena. Uh, but thank you for that. And you being a moderator, I don't know how fair that would be. Exactly. I know you say, oh, I'll be completely impartial. I was like, well, I don't know. Uh, the non sequitur guys kind of ruined it for everybody because they were the last thing from impartial. Anyway, moving on. This one's called Flat Earth and Religion. Uh, let's see here. Hello, Mark. Thanks for your continued Flat Earth work as well as its dissemination. I have a consideration about the relation of Flat Earth theory to religion. At the risk of offending some people, I cannot establish such a relationship or connection. Really? Okay, I'm dying to find out. The reason for this is that the issues of time, space... The weight, age, oh, here we go, the shape of the earth, the extent of the Antarctic regions, the existence of a dome are all scientific, not religious questions. I don't know about that. Uh, this is because these considerations are not about non-material spirit powers, angels, etc., but rather strictly and only about material things and processes, which means that by definition, they all lie within the purview I did not use that word, purview, of the scientific method, not ancient religious texts and cosmologies. The practice and application of science is the only effective way of proving the flat earth. Oh, I see what you're doing here. Hence, all the truly scientific flat earth research performed by fundamentalist Christians is high, highly commendable. However, it lies outside their religious claims, which are only interpretive, secondary, and peripheral peripheral that is to flat earth core issues which in their essentials are material uh, and scientific flat earth theory or flat earth reality cannot be supported or proved by citation of pre-scientific texts which were written before our modern period with its space flight and even if only in low earth orbit astronomy geology paleontology meteorology if such ancient texts happen to contain scientific data then that can only be because of coincidence, lucky guesses or simple observations of natural processes that are available to all people. Saying things like the Bible is a flat earth book does not prove flat earth or the Bible and worse, citing the Bible in this manner is already kind of a fundamentalist preaching to the choir. Not that blind, not that I blindly accept science. What I'm saying is that the flat earth must be supported and proved only by the scientific method. It must be materially and physically quantified. Attaching religious issues to it is arbitrary, unnecessary, and a hindrance uh, to educated people's acceptance of it. I find it a real downer when people begin with talking about the material world actualities and they perform direct experiments in support of flat earth but then sprinkle their private religious views all over the presentation. Keep it purely to science, I suggest, and the religious interpretations, if any, will take care of themselves. Uh, so I would simply say keep it flat and keep it scientific. If you read this email in your show, my last name is pronounced 
uh, Bastash. Oh, like mustache. I've had I've gotten emails from you before, Steve. Uh, keep up the great labor, best uh, because not many people have that last name, Steve Bastish. Um, well, and you know what? It's interesting because you're a well written letter first off, and two, you are one of the few, from what I can tell here, what you're what you're putting down on the page, a flat Earth atheist. Plain and simple, you uh, you do you're not a fan of religion. You're a fan of the scientific method. You believe in flat Earth in some capacity, and you want to keep it purely scientific. You do not want religion involved at all. Uh, appreciate the, uh, your stance. However, you got to understand that at least, this is not an exaggeration, at least 50% of the flat earth community is religious based. I mean, every meetup I go to, every conference that I go to, every anything that I go to, it is, there is a lot of, of religious people in the house. And you got to remember eight, if you believe the stats, is it eight out of every 10 people, 80% of the world is tied to one of the major religious houses. So look, you're going to be in the minority and that minority is going to get even smaller as you move forward. So, uh, hey, stick to your guns. Great. Fantastic. Just know what you're up against. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. A friend and I just watched the documentary on Netflix and we have a few questions that weren't answered. One, what is the bottom of the flat earth? Don't know. Two, how do you explain a volcano where lava comes from? That's in the clues. Three, what happens if all humans go on one side of the earth? It flips over and we all spin off into space. No, nothing happens if you go to one side of the earth. Absolutely nothing. Because <clears throat> human beings, even the seven billion of them, wouldn't carry enough weight. Kind regards, that's Eliza and, oh man, these names from outside the country just throw me. M-A-A-R-T-J-E. You guys pronounce it because I am not going to. Moving on. This one's called, Hello from Sweet Home. Mark, I've been red-pilled last year. The Holy Spirit, and here we go, here's the religious side, is opening up my eyes in a profound way. That includes picking up the earth with a firmament again, 50 odd years after I first believed it before going to public school. The all, This only happened last month, but I get images in my head from childhood of what I used to picture. I'm just being blown away. Just listen to an audio interview uh, on Rob's website. I'm guessing it's almost four years old by now. Yeah, Rob Skiba. Uh, the reason I'm writing is I just saw that you were speaking in Eugene on March 11th. I am. I'm, but no, 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 no. That's just a meetup. That's just a meetup. Uh, just a slight chance. Oh, that was a few days ago. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little behind there. Uh, just a slight chance I can get there this time. Uh, do you live in the area or just traveling through? I'd somehow like to connect. You're probably incredibly busy, but I don't work as I've been disabled for years now and being in sweet home isn't the most sweet home is a town uh isn't the most intellectually stimulating is there a town in oregon called sweet home maybe i'll see you monday but i'd like to connect somehow in the meantime i'll be looking at your vids etc uh the veil is being lifted jesus is lord and he doesn't sign it but his name is norm and yeah again remember guys if i'm making meetup videos most of the time i'm not going if it's a conference i'm probably going but if it's just a meetup chances are and i'll let you know it'll be in the title i will be there uh, I'll put my name in the title somewhere. Uh, and, and if say anybody else that's uh, on the speaking tour is going to be at the meetup, I will put that in there. But otherwise, it's it's a generic meetup and just everyone should go. So there you have it. This one's called... Uh, not sure why I'm writing. And I'm not supposed to read this on air. Uh, it's from Megan. I just want to let, and, and I wrote her back because she said, "Oh, I don't want you to read this on air." And so I, I said, "I won't. I won't use your name." It's a, it's a long letter, and I read it. And it's very heartfelt. Uh, she's definitely doing some soul searching here. And again, I try to read every mail or every meal. I tried to read every email, uh, but at the same time, I can't obviously answer most of them because I just not physical enough time in the day between the phone calls and everything else that I'm doing. But thank you, Megan. This one's called Returning with News. Mark, I just got back from listening to your YouTubes. It kills me when people say that. I have a question for you. Do you know any others like me who are flat earthers that are Mandela affected? By the way, I called in a while back 
a few times as Flat Fred from Longview. I've been hearing you say 90% are still in the closet. That's a shame. I sent the picture so you know I am not trolling you. I don't know how many Earths there are, but I am not from this one. But very possible. Way too many things are different here. Besides the fact this Earth is supposed to be on the Orion arm of the galaxy instead of the Sagittarius arm. Sorry to rant, uh, but I just wanted you to know if you knew about any others like me. Glad to hear things are going well for the community. Take care, youngster. Youngster. Also, thanks for taking the time to read this. Regards, Fred. Uh, no, I don't get a lot of emails from people that say that we're supposed to be in the Orion arm instead of the Sagittarius arm. I, I don't get a lot of emails like that. But if I, if I, if I do get one, I'll, I'll let you know. This one's called Flags, Please. <laughs> Text is in the subject line. Smiley face. That's from Rob uh, McKenzie. And yep, if anyone wants some Flat Earth flags, you can put, you know, they're just banners. One is the Flat Earth University flag and the other is the Flat Earth Army flag. Uh, I will send them, I'll send the graphics to you. Obviously not the physical flag. I'll send the, you the graphics and you can do with them as you please. This one's called Space Force. Mark. Following QAnon, it is speculated Space Force is simply an agency used to combat cybersecurity, AI, and 5G detriments, not an actual military branch. And that's from Dino. Yeah, yeah, very possible. Yeah, you could not make another branch of the military. You can't do it. Um, the other ones have been in place far too long. And the biggest problem with introducing Space Force, like like Space Marines or you know from Aliens or Starship Troopers, which is what everyone would think of, is that the recruiting process would destroy the others. Remember the other the other branches, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, and Coast Guard, they struggle. I mean, they battle each other for who has the recruiting rights. And all of a sudden, you're going to bring in some cool, shiny new armed force. Which, of course, would take billions and billions of dollars just to create the infrastructure. And then you're, they're going to recruit. Who wouldn't join Space Force? Everybody knows what they're getting with the other ones. Like Space Force, wow, that sounds really cool and futuristic. And, and it's like sponsored by Apple and Google. It's, uh, no, you can never do it. Never, ever do it. Uh, let's see here. Flat Earth Questions. That's what this, this one's called. Hi, Mark. My name is Matt. And I'm from London, England. I know you're probably inundated with emails and communications, but I would love to ask you some questions. So I've only recently started looking into the flat earth theory, and to be honest, I'm not convinced it is flat, but my mind isn't made up yet. The main thing I want to ask you, first of all, as I'm not really sure I understand when you and the others have talked about it, is the display system. On the Behind the Curve documentary on Netflix, you mention it after the eclipse, saying it is the cause of the eclipse. Now. I know my question is a bit vague, but what do you believe that this display system actually is and accounts for? I look forward to hearing from you. Matt. Uh, okay, the display system projects everything that you see in the sky, including the stars and the planets. And there would be, you know, a modified version of it would be the sun and the moon. Again, not, not difficult from our standpoint. Technology-wise, it's just a question of scale. We can do a sun on a screen now, which is so bright you cannot even look at it, and it generates some heat, and that's with a very limited technology. Imagine what we could do in 100 years, or 1,000 years, or had unlimited resources like whoever built this place. Um, and as far as like the eclipse, a perfect example would be, again, you go into a planetarium and it shows you a crescent moon. How is the crescent moon happening? What is blocking the light from the moon? Well, nothing, it's blocking itself. It's just dimming part of itself. Again, go to a planetarium. Seriously, I know it dates me and kids don't go to a planetarium anymore because it's super boring. Go there, let your eyes adjust, sit there for an hour and watch the sky. You will get this. You will totally get this. Moving on. This one's called Plane Routes in a Globe World. Uh, let's see here. Plane rides, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to bypass anyone that ever says, hey, there's plane rides. Because I get a lot of the questions that I got when I first made the clues because of the Netflix documentary. And they say, hey, there's nonstop. There's, there's a couple nonstop flights in the Southern Hemisphere. That's basically what it is. That's from Domingo. This one's called Flat Earth Clues. You made my day. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. Where do I even begin? Your YouTube video, Flat Earth Clues, changed the very course of my life. I'm a great fan of yours, and I make reference to your video in the comments section of Facebook every time I have an opportunity to 
based on the various groups I belong. I recently discovered there was a conference of Flat Earth in 2017 and 2018. I hope there would be one in this year so I can attend. Apologies for not introducing myself. My name is Adiranti, not spell it, trying to pronounce that last name. Uh, where is he from? Uh, a broadcast engineer by profession, which means I work at a media house radio to be precise. I live in Nigeria. That's why I can't pronounce that last name. Uh, but a frequent traveler to Europe. I've always wanted answers to a lot of questions. The movie Matrix was the first eye-opener for me. I began to study more with a renewed drive coupled with a lot of questions. That was when I stumbled upon your video and a lot of things made sense afterwards. When I watched the Matrix movie, I asked myself, are the people who wrote the story really human? Where did these revelations come from? As I watched your video, similar questions came to mind. Above all, the most important part is thank you. Purpose and choice are mutually exclusive. Until the very few who understand come to this reality, they would never really be free. May the force be with you. <laughs> nice. Nice. You threw in a couple movie references there. And yeah, good one. I like it. This one's called Support and Congrats. Hey, Mark, I want to let you know I appreciate your bravery and convictions and hope to hear your voice weigh in on issues for some time to come. It is, is it possible to buy official Mark Sargent swag? I couldn't find an official store and wanted to be sure my dollars went to fund your operation. Thanks for keeping going, uh, Joe. Okay, first off, there is no official Mark Sargent swag. Anything that you uh, see out there that isn't on my YouTube channel is probably going to somebody else. If... Um, you go to uh, any description box of any video that I make, there is something there that says join the Flat Earth Army. And you can get an I'm, a, I'm Mark Sargent t-shirt or a Flat Earth Army t-shirt. That money goes to the daughter of the peanut gallery who helps me out on my Strange World show. Does not go to me, which is to, you know totally fine. I Most of the stuff doesn't go to me because I don't really care. I'm just doing, I'm, again, I'm not trying to be famous or rich. I just want to be right. And the phone's ringing, which means I have to pause. Hang on one second. All right, the phone has now stopped ringing. So, um, yeah, it, but if you want to support me directly, uh, again, I'm not asking for any money. In fact, I do not put my PayPal address in the body of uh, the description box. However, if you're so inclined, I'm not going to turn it down, obviously. Just make a note so I know who you are. Send a note to me. And if you want to be anonymous, that's fine, too. You can make up a fake name. I don't care. Uh, my PayPal address is literally just my email address, the same one I rattle off here which is msargent23 at comcast.net, msargent23 at comcast.net. Thank you for that, Joe. And moving on, this one's called Flat Earth Interview. Oh, let's see, who wants to interview me? Hi, Mark. I am a junior at Lakewood High School in Arlington, Washington. I'm in the video production class and I was wondering if I could interview you uh, for a project. It would mean a lot to me if you could respond and let me know that you were able to do an interview. Yep. Fantastic. And he's going to be meeting me down uh, on Mukilteo, I think, on the 29th or the 30th of this month. So, cool beans. Moving on. This one's called, Would Like Your Thoughts. Hey, Mark Sargent, do you think it's possible that the truth is being hidden from us not because of a sinister hidden forces but because our minds are not yet capable of handling the truth thanks for your time and thought the sarge his actual name is gavin uh yeah yeah that's exactly why you i don't think the population was ready in 1960 and i don't think we had the ability to get the story out to everybody in the manner that they wanted to in 1960 so now it's 2019 everything's ready to go high-speed internet social media six billion smartphones everything's ready they can pull the trigger at just about any time. Moving on. This one's called, I Need Help Understanding the Truth. Dear Mr. Sergeant, I recently watched the documentary Behind the Curve and found it very enlightening. It has made me question my 20 years of education, but I still have some questions that were not clearly answered in the documentary. Uh, okay, let's see. We'll, we'll rapid fire these real fast because I know people will... Um, you guys already know a lot of these answers. Uh, how do the sun and moon operate above the earth? Do they simply rotate in a parallel plane? Yeah, something like that. Two, if so, how are the day and night made? Because they're very small. Uh, also, if they operate on a parallel plane, why does the sun rise and set over the horizon? It doesn't. 
three how time differences explain see the above two because it's really really small uh four why are there opposite seasons in the northern and southern hemispheres uh, because the sun and the moon don't or especially the sun doesn't move in the same track it, it's like a needle on a record player five how thick is the earth what is the diameter of the earth yeah geez, all the right questions i'm not even gonna answer these uh six what is outside the dome seven why are nasa's forays into space necessarily false couldn't they have just simply explored within the dome <laughs> see it's already in her head uh eight what are the other planets of our solar system nine how do gps encompasses work 10 what do you make of climate change amazing how many people throw in climate change uh, I appreciate your assistance on my search for truth and would welcome any materials you have that could clear up these questions. Best regards, Mary P. There you go. That's what the documentary did. You want to know, and if you're in the Flat Earth community, I know people hate the documentary. If you're in the community, this is what it does. How many emails have I gotten? A, a lot from people that say, I saw the documentary, I have questions. I saw the documentary, I have questions. And I saw this live in the field in audiences that were watching the documentary and I was sitting there with them. And then at, when I got up on stage, they're like, I have questions. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Beliefs. Uh, might be a little long. Um, it is from, he's mixing some stuff. It's from Donald. And thank you for that, Donald. Uh, I appreciate your, your email. And uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to respond to it, but I appreciate your email. This one's, he was mixing some conspiracies in there. I, I try to stick to Flat Earth if I can. If you want to smatter some other stuff in there, that's fine. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth University Propos Proposal 2017. 2017? Hi, Mark. Hope you're well. Not sure if you remember. Oh, okay. But I emailed you in 2017. Oh, absolutely. I remember you. <laughs> that's okay. I'm not, I'm not making fun. You'd be surprised how many people say that, though. It's like, oh, I email emailed you 18 months ago. It's like, really? Because... I literally can't remember my last name sometimes. Uh, to ask about your flat earth beliefs or a university documentary. Is, oh, for a university documentary assignment. I created a documentary proposal around you in the Flat Earth International Conference. Recently watched Behind the Curve documentary on Netflix and was surprised to see you in the Flat Earth International Conference. Just wanted to get in touch and say you came across very well and to say congrats on the doc. Thanks, Harry. Yep. Yep. I mean, there's some people that make projects and you're never going to see the light of day. They're shown just to uh, their campus peers or friends. And, but yeah, there's lots of people that have shot stuff on this. All right, this one's called Questions. Hi, Mark. I just watched most of your videos, including the introductory ones. Researched some of my own. I've enjoyed watching them. And it has certainly raised a lot of questions in my mind. I'm keeping an open mind. Would like to eventually accept or dismiss the theory. In the spirit of that, what counter studies have been have at least given you pause to consider their information either out of respect for the investigations or the information itself because i would think an important part of believing anything is keeping an open mind to all information available thanks for getting back to me and i hope you're doing well and that's from mark hegman yeah there haven't been any counter studies that's the part trolls will troll us and try to try to pick apart our things but they won't do any experiments on their own that's really interesting you'd mention that uh, very few uh, groups have ever done experiments. National Geographic didn't even pay for their own. They uh, they went down there and watched another debunking group. I think that was the, that was the only one that really went out of their way. They had a team of, I don't know, 20 people there, and they were trying to do some long-distance photography experiments to try to prove uh, against Flat Earth. And what's interesting is National Geographic didn't even use the, the best one, which was the, the balloons at 10 miles away because we proved there was no curvature we could see them clear as day and they said well we shouldn't be able to see them we, we should only be able to see them when we rise them up from the beach it's like no we can see them on the beach right now uh so yeah it'd be great if these trolls would get off their asses and make some videos do some experiments against us so we can tear apart those moving on this one's called hello mark i was wondering about that if anyone make any analysis about uh, yeah, definitely not English. About Marvel movies, like your perspective with your intelligent looking. <laughs> okay, what he's basically saying there is, does anybody, um, he, he, he thinks that I would do well to do movie reviews, which is very possible, except there's a lot of movie reviews out there. Come on, they're only movies. Uh, even though I love movies, love them, love them, and they've given me some great perspectives on life. Uh, I'm, there's already some great people doing movie reviews. Uh, my favorites, are, of course, are the guys from, from Red Letter Media who have covered just about everything 
uh, current, past. Uh, they haven't done documentaries, and I'm a little nervous if all of a sudden they're bored one day and they review Behind the Curve. I'm a little nervous about that because uh, I've, I've watched those guys for a while, and, and I've even bought some of their merch. And I, in fact, I even sent one, one of, I, t- I bought an art print and I sent it to them with cash in the envelope and said, Sign, autograph this and send this back to me. So I've got a, I, I had them all autograph it. And I thought it was kind of fun. So anyway, uh, moving on. This one's called Jason A. Video Flat Earth. Mark, this evidence changes everything. 2019. All right. What's the video? The video is called what the evidence it's literally called this evidence chases it changes everything from jason a uh why have i not seen this yet he didn't put flat earth in the title he's got a million subs and it was made on march 9th that's that's why nobody in the community has seen this yet so i may have to i may have to check this out it's called this evidence changes everything by jason a and i had not watched it so thank you. That was sent by Francis. I'm going to put that in my to-do pile and figure out what the heck. It's got, what, 280,000 hits? Would have gotten a lot more if... Oh, wow, that letter has got... The font is way too small. Uh, from outside the dome, it's called Dear Mr. Sergeant. It's from Plainus Terra. And it goes about the talks about the Dyson Sphere and talks about a lot of perspectives. Sorry, the, the font is way too small. I'm not going to crank it up to read that. Thank you, though. Yeah, it, by the way, I'm older. Send, send me, don't don't use tiny font if you can help it. This one's called Eddie Bravo Spars Alex Jones on Flat Earth. Hilarious, hilarious. Uh, Mark, thanks for reply. I don't see QA 129. Did you publish it yet? Yes, I did. In fact, I'm doing QA 130 right now. Every once in a while, just so you guys know, I will make a Q, question, QA video. And... I just because of time constraints, I won't pu- publish it till the next morning. If I'm working out late or if I've got something else I got to do, I, I won't publish it for a day or so. So don't think that I, um, I'm ignoring you or have died or anything. This one's called GPS signal on the ocean. Hi, Mark. I discovered this info recently. I thought I'd share it with you. Aircraft location position is transmitted by ADS. B, automatic dependent and surveillance broadcast transmitter that requires a ground station as a receiver. That's what FlightAware are showing on their website. There are no receiving stations on the oceans, hence the aircrafts can't be tracked except other aircrafts in the vicinity with a receiver. GPS signal is available over the ocean and used by marine traffic beside the aircraft. Anything beyond 88.5 degrees latitude was considered as a GPS dead zone but that restriction is also lifted. Basically, both GPS and internal gyroscopes are used together for redundancy sake. Whether they are balloons or attached to the dome, something is up there that is stationary. Regards, Danny. Hmm, good point. Nice. Next is called Admanson South Pole Station. Hi, Mark. My name is Natalie, and I first heard of you on Canary Cry Radio. I just recently, in the last few weeks, started to become more convinced about Flat Earth. I want to know about your thoughts about the Edmondson Scott South Pole Station. Is it real? Yeah, sure. If it does exist, where would it be on a Flat Earth map? Uh, Really close to the coast. Coastline. That's it. Nothing special. Uh, Just one little dot on this giant ring. Uh, You are heroic. Oh, that's nice. That's from Natalie. Thanks, Natalie. This one's called Birthday Gift Meeting You. Uh, I don't know if I read this one before. Oh, yeah, it was the birthday thing. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew, but there was a, um, a woman that, that uh, wrote me and said that her brother was a conspiracy guy and his birthday was coming up and he really liked to meet me. And that was... The, and. But he, it, she set it up as like a birthday gift because she was in Seattle. And so we met at Ivers down on in Muckleteo and we had dinner and it was um, her and her brother and the brother's wife and me and had a great time. I don't know if they're listening to this right now. Uh, her name was Shelly. She was wonderful. So sad she's married because she was just adorable. Uh, and... Um, uh, th- she's uh, she, she was Israeli, Israeli, and so was her brother. And uh, I don't know a lot of Israeli people. That, that's where they're from originally. 
And it was great. A lot of fun meeting them and having dinner with them. And uh, enjoyed it very, very much. So thank you guys. And yeah, if you ever want to you know, hang out, uh, you got to let me know. I don't know. Sometimes I can. Sometimes I can't. Uh, generally, if I'm if I have to go off island, I you know I try to meet you on just the other side because the ferry lines can be brutal, depending on when you come, especially on weekends because this is a summer uh, weekend place, and the ferry lines can be two three hours long. So I just encourage people like, oh look, let's just meet at a restaurant down near the ferry. That way I can just walk across and nobody has to deal with any lines. There you have it. This one's called refueling in Alaska. Mark, President Trump has to know the earth is flat because it makes no sense to stop in Alaska to just refuel while coming back from North Vietnam. Here's the link. Uh-huh. Yep, yep. It's, it's on sarahpalin.com. Interesting. Trump lands Alaska refuel visits U.S. troop freezing temps. And here's the link to another stop in Alaska. This article tells if all it all on why planes stop in Alaska. Alaska is the hub because it's between the lower 48 and Asia. Thanks for the interviews you do and looking forward to your show with Patricia. Anyways, a real pleasure to see both of you. And uh, that's from a guy in Bryan, Texas. Very cool, man. Thank you for that. This one is called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I just watched a documentary on Netflix and found you videos on YouTube. I'm new to this whole Flat Earth thing and I have some questions. And I'm just going to rattle off the questions, guys. You know, you know what these are. It's almost identical to the other person. One, what is the other side? Like if you looked from Earth, from the bottom underneath it. Uh, two, what would happen if you dug a hole straight through the ground? Can you even do that? Three, where's the edge? Has anyone seen it? Four, ha can you see the dome or is it transparent? Really not trying to criticize or debunk anything. Just genuinely cur curious. Have a great day. Uh, La Visa. L-O-V-I-S-A. Cool. This one's called It's Sundog from the Guild. Well, that's a long email. Um, all right. You know what? I got to read it because he's in the Guild. The Flat Earth Guild, by the way. If, if you still play Warcraft or if you haven't played in a while, uh, we actually have a Flat Earth Guild out there. I didn't, I didn't create the name, but apparently I'm the Guild leader now. Um, it's wealthy and we got a you know, very supportive, friendly group. Very casual. Not, not a, we're not, don't do a lot of hardcore core stuff. It's mostly for leveling. Uh, okay, so uh, it starts out, Oh, hi, Mark, or should I say Morpheus? <laughs> Sundog here from your Flat Earth Guild. I just wanted to introduce myself and provide a brief background relating to Flat Earth. Thank you so much for all the hard work you, and dedication you've given. My life will never be the same, and I'm so grateful for your influence. Born in 73, so not that much uh, younger than me, and raised a Roman Catholic, my mother was a supernumerary for Opus Dei and wanted me to attend an all-boys Opus Dei high school. And I said, hell no. After the tour, I always questioned religion but didn't stay until college. Didn't stray until college. After seeing Star Wars in a theater at age four, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker for real. But alas, there was no amount of kung fu training in the world that would bring me closer to meeting Master Yoda. I would have to settle with aspiring to reach the heights of of maverick and goose <laughs> movie references let's do it i attend i attended flight college daniel webster college in nashua new hampshire for three years earning a private pilot's license and flight slot in the marine corps and was forced to drop the program after ocs boot camps injuries did not heal fully oh it's sad um i then pivoted into exercise physiology for three years at Northeastern University in Boston and was introduced to Eastern meditation and esoteric healing philosophies and practices. Running out of funding in 96, I joined the working world as a personal trainer, among other things. I moved to California in 97 to finish school on a budget and became ill with severe ulcerative colitis with a near-death experience in 99. I bounced back soon after with a new perspective in life and began to see the matrix all around me. I was fascinated with most conspiracy theories and realized I had little to no power in combating the powers that be with all of their evil ways until now. I had given up on most of my concern for trying to solve the riddles, uncover the deceptions, and affect my positive change since about 2005. To be honest, my first exposure to Flat Earth was from a very low-quality video 
of Matt Boylan in 2014. I had autoplay turned on, and the next thing I know, there's some obnoxious dude eating a grapefruit, bitching about how they all want us to hear the word world word globe and see images of it everywhere we looked. I thought it was funny, but extremely annoying. I just didn't want to deal with this attitude, so I moved on after a few minutes. My wife and I had satisfied most of our longing for the truth with things like Coast to Coast AM and Ancient Aliens. They all changed one afternoon in November of 2017. After overhearing her listening to a strikingly interesting video, Flat Earth Clues, she then proceeds to yell, Han, I think the Earth is flat. My initial lighthearted chuckle and smiling response was, What? Are you serious? I thought, how in the world can it be flat if it's a sphere? Then I watched a bit of your clues and listened, and then it hit me. Hard. I realized initially that there were sound logic and truth to the flat earth arguments, but as you know, my programming would not allow me to accept it without some serious emotional consequences. At this point, my face began to resemble a more grievous and threatened look of dread. Like so many others, I started transitioning through the five stages of grief or some variation and began scouring for information. We watched and rewatched the clues and jumped around be between videos by Dubay, Boylan, Jaronism, J. Dreamers. Oh, I haven't heard that one in a while. And others. We were looking for the ultimate proof to put our minds at ease, even though we had seen so much evidence. The infighting and shill calling by Dubay, Boylan, and others further complicated this process. We finally just settled on J. Dreamers as a source of education and exploration because he seemed to be the only one not involved in any accusations and he adamantly opposed the drama. As great as he is, it wasn't enough. As the months and our lives rolled by, the frustration of not having a solid and trusted source of learning continued to weigh on us. For whatever reason, maybe intuition, we decided to just trust in you Aww, and go for it. After skipping around on your channel, I decided to start at the beginning and listen to every single bit of the Strange World series. Wow, that's a lot of them. That's 190 of them now. I wanted to catch up so I can move forward and hopefully someday soon contribute to and join in with the community as an activist, a YouTuber, and a friend. When I learned you had a Flat Earth Guild in the World of Warcraft, I was over the moon and so excited to join in with like-minded people in my favorite virtual space to help spread the word and have fun adventure in the meantime. As a funny side note, a few months after discovering the truth, I began working at Richie Navigation. I'm not sure if I can help the Flat Earth cause from this position, but I find it humorous that I was maneuvered into the solitary role responsible for building their flagship line of high-end nautical compasses, the Globemaster series. Ha <laughs> ha, that's funny. Anyway. Thank you again, Mark, for everything you've done and are doing. You're so right in saying the flat earth is different from all the rest. It simply is the only real conspiracy theory that we, the people, can actually do something about. Every day we can affect our, ourselves and maybe others and to learning the truth of where we actually live and more eminently how we actually have been deceived about who we really are. Many blessings to you, sir, and see you in Azeroth soon. That's from Jay. Cool, man. Well done. This one's called Incredible Video, 2.5 hours long. Mark, if you take the time to watch this, you may see this life in a better light. At least go to the 12 minute, 20 second point to hear what he has to say, wait, why there has to be a creator, or at least some very logical thinking and evidence, more pieces in the big picture puzzle. All right, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna click on the video, I'm not gonna, and it's called Age of Deceit 3, Remnants in the Cyber Hive Earth. All right, I will take a look. Not right now, but I will. This one's called New Clock Design. Uh, hi, Mark, thought you might want to add this to your slideshow collection. It's another fun way to attract some subtle attention to the flat earth. It's called What's Beyond. The waiting list seems to be moving in an exponential direction. I was not expecting the Netflix to release to do that so soon. Well, Netflix is instant. Uh, next step is to get some serious production going. It'll be, it won't be long before I make my 100th uh, model. Thanks again for all you have done in the Flyers community. If you'd like to have me on your show sometime, it would be an honor. I really want to meet Mad Mike and show off the van and the expo in Vegas in May. Uh, however, I just drove 2,000 miles and road trips are not as much fun as they used to be. So we'll see. That's from Chris Pontius. You know what? I got to have Chris Pontius on the show. So I'm going to put that in my to-do pile and I will invite... Chris to be on the um, on Strange World with me. This one's called Watch the Flat Earth to the Edge and Back official trailer on YouTube. Hi Mark, did you get a chance to see this? It's Logan Paul's documentary trailer coming out on March 20th. 
which is in five days from now. Stay flat, Alma. Yes, I have seen the trailer. Do I know what he's going to do? And do I know how the media is going to react to it? No, I don't. Um, it, <laughs> what can I tell you? He already subcontracted out a party to do all the editing. The di Okay, here's the big difference. Because I know that Logan Paul, everybody's envious of everybody else. And Logan Paul wants to be Shane Dawson. He so wants to be Shane Dawson. And he wants to have Shane Dawson's viewers. There's a huge difference, though, between those two guys. One, even though they're roughly the same age, roughly, uh, Shane Dawson got his inspiration and motivation because he had a horrible childhood. Uh, he was a severely overweight gay kid who was beaten by his father. And he's not shy about talking about this. And that you want to talk about creative angst and where it comes from, there it is. He is a super creative guy, and he wears his soul in his sleeve. And that's why Shane Dawson is loved by his fans, just loved by them. And <clears throat> Shane Dawson, when he made a Flat Earth video, is barely in it. That's you want to, you know, if Logan Paul's listening or if someone can let him know, here's the difference. Shane Dawson was barely in that video. It was 20 something minutes long and he just made just a, just a, just a few little scenes where he's in there. Right. Which is interesting because the, he, Shane Dawson's not about sh shy about being on camera. Logan Paul's video, Logan's in it all the time. It's all about Logan. That's all he cares about is Logan. Shane cares about other people. Uh, and again, tragic backstory. Logan Paul doesn't have a tragic, tragic backstory. So he's never going to be Shane. And so even though he's trying to replicate Shane's video that he, you know, the number one flat earth video of all time with 26, 27 million hits at this point, uh, if you, if you type in flat earth and sort by view count, that's where you'll see it. And he doesn't even show up in the top 10. It's very, very interesting. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, this one's called flat earth. Mark, I just watched your movie on Netflix. My question to you, and I've been trying to find out, why isn't there a picture of the Earth from space? Uh, well, they, there's there's a couple that they pass off. I mean, it's not, but they're not real. Uh, sorry, as many times as we're supposed to have been in space and the many telescopes, then they're, why don't they have a photo? Is this part of the conspiracy? Yes, it is. This would stop the conspiracy. Thank you, Barbara. Sorry, Barbara. Barbara Love. Uh, yeah, the the first blue marble shot, and you guys all know this, was taken in 1972, uh, and it was the only blue marble shot, literally the only full disc sunlight image of the Earth from space for 43 years. And only after Flat Earth started steamrolling is when they decided to start making more. And the stuff they're putting out is terrible. They're just, it's just awful, awful, awful. Uh, this one's called No Subject. Mark, I recently watched the documentary on Netflix, Behind the Curve, which highlighted several of the people uh, at the front of this movement that does not accept the heliocentric model of the Earth. I've been following this idea for several years, and I came across your YouTube channel while researching some ideas of my own on a different topic. About 100 years ago, two scientists conducted an experiment in an effort to detect the presence and properties of a substance called the ether. Yep. The experiment conducted was in 1887 and is known as the Michelson-Morley experiment. The end result of the experiment did not detect the ether and it changed the course of physics. The ether was the focus of my topic. It is interesting to note that both Maxwell and Tesla managed to accomplish the majority of their research and development using the ether as the foundation for their work. The Michelson-Morley experiment attempted, attempted to detect a relative motion of matter using a test apparatus through the luminiferous ether. They never did. Why was that? Then thought... Uh, then thought, I don't think, sorry, this sentence is horrible. Then thought, then occurred to me. What if they made a huge error in their experiment? What if there was, in fact, no lateral relative motion? Yeah, exactly. What if they made the assumption that the Earth was revolving and it simply was not? Yep, absolutely. That and Aries failure. It seems crazy at the time. Since then, I've been conducting my own series of experiments in an effort to detect relative motion, the rotation of the Earth. So one of the artifacts of my research into electrodynamics, magnetism, and gravity has been that there simply is no movement. There is no forward movement. There is no lateral movement. The only thing we can detect is gravity. And even that... You got to define that. And that's from Ray. Thank you, Ray. It's good. All right. Let's see if we can end on a fun one. I'm going to try to end on a slightly, uh, uh, slightly earlier because again, my, my voice, I'm just a little out of it today for whatever reason. Didn't sleep well. Um, I don't know if I'm running a fever or anything. And I rarely get sick. 
So, uh, but it's it's not much. I mean, it's mild. This one's called a uh, .999 Silver Round. Uh, MK Bar sells a flat earth silver round. Just saying. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, I looked at this site. It's from MK Bars with a Z and Bullion.com. They actually made a uh, little one ounce silver penny pincher bar, and it's just a stamp. I mean, it's just a, a flat earth map stamped into the thing. It's not like the the thing that I got from uh, PowerCoin from Italy, which they, it was just a work of art, where it's this two ounce coin that's fully painted with a dome, and it's gorgeous, and I'm going to carry it around. I need, I really needed it for the um, for the interviews, because of the small model that I have, you have to look inside it, and if you're in a dark place, you can't see it very well. I mean, it's a good model. I like it, and you know, it wasn't cheap. It's all brass housing. But uh, this new one by PowerCoin, I really, really dig. So I do not encourage you guys to necessarily go out and buy one. They are not cheap. It's at least 250 euros. Uh, I mean, a, but at the same time, if, you, if you're going out and you're showing people, if you're talking to a lot of people about this, if you're doing activism, yeah, I'd, I'd pick one up if you have the means. This one's called Nat Geo. Hey, Mark, I just saw the Nat Geo show with you on it. I still don't believe, but it was nice to see you on the show. Hope you're doing well. That's from Andy. Uh, yeah. Yep. National Geographic. We shot for three days. They condensed it down to 10 minutes. And they hate us. They hate us so much. Uh, why not? I mean, this is National Geographic. They're science-based. Uh, they they were, have a really, really tough time. This one's called Flat Earth Cruise. Hey, Mark, my name is Forrest. I've heard of the Flat Earth Cruise in 2020. What is the planned route? Thank you, Forrest. Uh, it is not... Okay, it, just because it says it's a Flat Earth Cruise, it doesn't mean it's an Antarctic cruise. It's it's a pleasure cruise. It's, it's leaving out of Miami or somewhere down in Florida like everything else does. I think the seats are limited to 300 in 2020, and I will probably go. I already told everybody that's, uh, that's going down there, it's like, look, I have a motion sickness issue. Even though it's like, wait, don't you live on an island and have to take boats everywhere? It's like, yeah, if I'm on deck, I'm fine. With a lot of people. It's it's. But if I go below deck, which on a cruise boat, you're below deck quite a bit of the time, uh, I, I may have problems. So we will see. I mean, I'll go if I take Dramamine. So if I give a zombie speech up there, you guys know why. I'm off the hook. This one's called Joe Jackson. Hi, Mark. Just dropping a line to tell you I dig every time you play Stepping Out. Joe Jackson grew up and used to live at the end of my street here in... Burton on Trent, where the best beer is brewed in England. Try playing his other hit, Different for Girls. It's a killer. Wow, that's from Jay Bear. And I, I honestly didn't know until just now that Joe Jackson grew up in England. How fun is that? All right, Do I, is, is that one? I shouldn't end on that one. All right, let's let's have let's see it again. I'll, I'll I've, I've got to get into this. This one's called "Fellow Flat Earther in Turkey in Need of Assistance." Hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Kagan Karaman, pronounced Khan. Khan? Which part is pronounced Khan? A U.S. Air Force Gulf veteran living in Turkey. I just called you and left a message without realizing what time it was. I apologize. I'd like to chat, talk as soon as possible. I'm on my own over here, pretty much a cast out of everything because of what I believe in. I never knew how much. A single thought in my head would cause discomfort and disturbance around me. My life will never be the same, I guess. Please get back. Thank you. Uh, if I don't know anybody in Turkey at the, at the moment. Sorry. Uh, if anyone's working, if doing military stuff over in Turkey and you're a flat earther, let me know and I'll, I'll try to put you in touch with them if I get a chance. But he's not alone. He just doesn't know there's probably flat earthers walking around him right now. Uh, this one's called Take a Look at This. This one's called Illuminati, Real Flat Earth, Top Conspiracy Theories. It's from the Express, Chemtrails, Moon Landing, Fake, Pizzagate. Yeah, British British newspapers love to run that stuff. Let's see here. This one's called... Okay, should we end on this one? Let's, let's try it. Flat Earth. This one's called Dear Mr. Sergeant, I'm 33 year old, 33, 33 year old woman from Spain. <clears throat> Sorry, but my English is a bit poor. Now you're better than most. Uh, but I'm going to try. You understand me. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, I've been seeing on Netflix the video where you and Patricia and other people say that the Earth is flat. I'm from the people who believe the Earth is spherical, and seeing the video, I was was emerged me a doubt. 
if the earth <coughs> is flat, why there are countries with 20 hours of light and sun during the year, or why there are countries, oh, places on the earth where, <coughs> excuse me, all year are 25 Celsius of temperature. According to your theory, the examples I expose you should not happen. I love the fact she said I exposed you. I know she didn't mean to say that. Then can you explain me how it happened? Two weeks ago, I tried to understand your theory, but I can't. And I try to find solutions to events that happen now. Please, I don't want to hurt anyone. I just look for answers. I hope you receive this email. Best regards from Spain, Beatrice. And I will write her back if I get a chance. This one's called... Okay, come on. Let's find a good one. Okay, this is one we're going to end on. Ready? Because kind of, I started the show with this. This one's called Quick Question. Hi, Mark. I'm a big fan in, uh, of your stuff. Are you on Instagram? I've been in touch with an account claiming to be you, but I wanted to independently verify it. I'd hate to see that someone's impersonating you for their own personal gain. Just wanted to do some dil diligence and make sure you were really on the other end of the account. Thanks, Flat Earth Traveler. Nope, I am not on the other end of the account. And I will write them back immediately and say I am not. <laughs> yeah, again, I'm only on YouTube. But my, all my contact information is in YouTube. So literally my email address, my phone number, my physical address, uh, social security number, bank account numbers, all that stuff is in the description box of every video that I make. Uh, everything else I'm not on. So if you're talking to somebody on Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever the heck's out there, uh, just know it's, it's not me. I'm easy to find. You can call me and we'll end with this. You can email me directly here at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.